So now I'm just going to move this thing to zero 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 point. Uh, I've got it highlighted, got the gizmo active, and I can actually input it down the bottom in this uh, world coordinate bar. So I'll write zero, zero, and zero, and that's moved it back to the exact the, the center of my grid. Now the boolean command or boolean logic is probably best described with this diagram here. <clears throat> We've got two objects in a scene and the blue areas uh, denote the different options the command will make available to us. So we can either have the intersection, the resulting intersection of A and B, we can have the union of shapes A and B, or we can have the subtraction of A from B or inversely B from A. So here I've got a square, or sorry, a cube, and I'm going to create in the first instance a sphere. All right, and what I can do is I can just move that sphere into the um, <coughs> square, so it sits within it. And I might just scale it up ever so slightly, like so. And I can activate this Boolean command, or in this case what we've got is, if we jump back to this diagram, we've got A and B. Um, we'll use box as A, and we'll use the sphere as B. And we can uh, apply Boolean logic to the subtraction of one from the other, or the intersection or the union. So Boolean's tucked away under a section of the Create panel called Compound Objects. All right. To activate the command, we just choose what we want as A. We click Boolean, and then we pick what we want as Operand B. Okay, so once that's highlighted, we can then select the geometry, and you'll see then that we have one mesh object subtracting from the other okay and you can see here in the parameters that we've got a taking away from b we could also have b taking away from a where the box actually um, subtracts from the sphere we could have the intersection of the two or we could have the union of the two so that now exists as one object okay so very simply that's what it is uh, and it'll help you to kind of further refine, um, you know, some some shapes, some objects. So I'll just go through that again. We go over, we create um, what's going to consist, what's going to be shape A. In this case, I'm going to use a box, and what I might use for the second instance is another box. And I'm going to rotate this thing around to an odd angle and I'm just going to shove it within box number one. I then come down, I dro use my drop down list here in my create tab. I go to compound objects. I select box one. I press boolean. I then pick my second oper uh, operand or my second operator and then I select the ge geometry within the scene that I want it to be and then I can do either the union, the intersection, or subtract A from B or B from A, however you want. All right, and that is the resulting shape. Okay, you'll also notice that we don't have access to the original shapes now. This becomes its own polygon mesh. I'm going to delete this one, and I'll just drop this one back to zero zero zero, so it's centered. If you want to actually um, get the original geometry back out of it, you can extract it from within the uh, modifier tab once the object's selected, like so. You can extract it by instance or by copy. Or what's a better idea is that you come to a point and then what we do is we apply an either an editable mesh or an editable polygon to it, to this new object, 
and we can then start to deform or manipulate the shape from its vertice points okay because it is a mesh object all right and let's say we wanted to apply that remember that within these stacks whatever modifier that we actually put on top of this we have the opportunity um, of turning off and on okay so just that's a bit of a um, recall so that's the boolean command okay now from this if you can recall we can actually render an image by hitting M and by dragging the materials across to the view editor of the material editor um, like so if I double click on the word I can then edit the parameters of that and as long as I've got that selected I can use this little icon to actually apply the material and I can put lights in the scene if you recall we created last time a daylighting system um, otherwise we can render with no materials but we do um, then compromise the glossy and the reflective properties of the uh, materials that we just applied uh, and render setup will allow us to specify the size of the, of the image that we want to output. Um, <clears throat> the thing that we can also do, which can quickly generate uh, some orthographic projections of this object, is we can actually spin our view by clicking in the top left corner to either um, a front, back, left or right view and we can render that off and we you can see here where we've, we we um, eventually get quite a flat image but you could take this JPEG, save it as a JPEG um, take it into AutoCAD rescale it because you do know the distance from here to here is 6 meters because you created the geometry there and then trace a two-dimensional drawing out from that 